But do you ever get afraid, like, yo, am I going to be friend-zoned, right? Because you're treating him like a friend. Well, I was friend-zoned. He didn't want to be with me. Oh, he literally no. did not. We got to get into He that. kept, well, because this was the thing. He kept, like, wanting to be friends. Mm -hmm. Like, he wanted us to be friends. He didn't want us to be, he didn't want to be in a relationship. He, like... He was fighting it. He was, he, we, you know, we 22. Who wants to be in a committed relationship? Right, like, you right. want to be young and do your shit. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So, you know, I ain't pushed. Like, now nah, you got to be in a relationship with me. And, oh, you know what? We we enjoying each other's time. So I love it. you as a friend. Like, if it, if you end up falling in love with me, it's a different well, thing. Then, right. <laughs> I'm here with open arms yeah. to accept you. Like, I understand. Uh, it's okay. I'm here for you when you're ready. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs>
crossing lines and y'all yeah. getting closer to being in a relationship or whatever, like you say like, wow, that was really foul, but I won't make a bigger deal Right. Then, like, if I was a girlfriend and I was like, oh, you should have done this, 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 this. Nah, right. no, no, no. I just stay cool. But, but do you ever get afraid, like, yo, am I going to be friend zoned, right? Because you're treating him like a friend. Well, I was friend zoned. He didn't want to be with me. Oh, he literally no. did not. We got to get into He that. kept, well, because this was the thing. He kept, like, wanting to be friends. Mm -hmm. Like, he wanted us to be friends. He didn't want us to be, he didn't want to be in a relationship. He, like, he was, was fighting it. He was, he, we, you know, we 22. Who wants to be in a committed relationship? Right. Like, you want right. to be young and do your yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So, you know, I ain't pushed. Like, nah, you got to be in a relationship with me. And, oh, you know what? We we enjoying each other's time. So I love it. you as a friend. Like, if it, if you end up falling in love with me, it's a different well, thing. Then, right. <laughs> I'm here with open arms yeah. to accept you. Like, I understand. Uh, it's okay. I'm here for you when you're ready. <laughs> Sorry. So we got to start from the beginning. Okay. So where did you grow up? Let's start there. I think that's a good place to start. I grew up, so I was born and raised in East New York, Brooklyn. Ooh. Not in Kings County Hospital. No. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, I got ringing. Hold on. My What's spirit, happening? My, my spirits are like, you don't got to start that far back. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was so weird. <laughs> but uh, so I was born and raised in East New York, Brooklyn. And uh, we uh, were born, we lived in the projects and Boulevard projects. Um um, I'm Dominican. My, okay. Both, I was born here, but my okay. parents are both Dominican. Okay. Um, they were also born here, or they were born over there. No, they, they were, were born, born over there. there. Okay. They're from the uh, they're from the campo. Okay. So from it. the field. From I don't know if you ever heard of San Jose, San Jose yes. de la Mata. Mm -hmm. So my they're family from... is from San Jose de la Mata. Okay. My dad is from a campo called Don Juan, which mm -hmm. is like. Uh, a little more wealthier than my mom's side. Okay. Um, but not like great. I want to say like middle class. I want to say okay. that's what they were. Um, and my and much more educated than my mom's side too. Okay. But my mom's side, they had nothing. Like my mom only has like a third grade degree, like a third third grade education. Mm -hmm. Um, there's they both have family. My dad has a family of twenty, what? like twenty siblings. Oh my god. And that's not counting the outside. Right. Of okay. the family. Okay. Um, and then my mom is a family of twelve, I believe, twelve or eleven. Okay. Um, but my mom had to like she couldn't go to school and had to help around the house and that whole thing. Okay. So my mom came over here when she was twenty one, and she was pregnant with my first sister. Okay. But with a different husband. Okay. And then he left her. Mm -hmm. Th this I'm going into my mom's story because it yeah, plays yeah. a whole role into let's, my life. Let's, you know? let's go into it. Let's <laughs> yeah. go into it. And so my mom, um, she was pregnant with my sister mm -hmm. and her husband left her. The minute she brought him over here to get like... The papers? Yeah. Uh -huh. He left her, had a whole another family with another, another woman. And my mom had to like... Uh, she started living with his brother and his wife. Mm who is my aunt on my dad's side. So I guess that's how she met my dad. Okay. Um, but his his brother took her in and she kind of like, you know, working still in factories, um, didn't really have anywhere to live. Like she, she like, that was a huge trauma thing for her. Right. And she was able to get a, an apartment in housing. Um, at the time they, we lived on like the 14th floor. Mm. But then once I came, um, I think we only we moved down to the fourth floor in the same building. Thank God. Yeah. Just in case the elevator broke down, Yo. you could still. <laughs> I know those struggles. Yo. Cause uh, you remember that blackout? Yes. Yo. I know those struggles. Thank God we was too. on the fourth floor. Yo. <laughs> I would have been chilling downstairs, like I'm not going up there until Yo. until this blackout is done. Because I'll be damned. There's no. Is there a crane? Cause I'm not doing this. But um. So, so you moved to the fourth floor. Okay. Yeah. And we've lived there uh, literally. My mom still is on the fourth floor, same apartment. Okay. And lived there our whole life. And but I'm, wait, when did you come into the picture? I came in, my sister was five. Okay, got so it. I was, okay. Yeah. So that's when I came in. And then um, I have another sister. Two years later, my little sister is born. Um, okay. And it makes me a middle child. So growing up, I was very much the person, like the mediator between their issues, but then I will also get in trouble 
for telling my little sister, like, nah, you was wrong for that. Or telling right. my other sister. Like, it was mainly my little sister because she don't like to be told that she's wrong. Mm -hmm. She's Sagittarius, so she's like, I'm nah. a Sagittarius. <laughs> I was going to let you keep going, yeah. but I'm like, wait, you ain't about to bash us. <laughs> Hold up. up. Wait, don't fry like you could. You I'm going to stand up a little yeah. sis. So, <laughs> So you could be wrong? I mean, I'm nah, just saying. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Nah, I love my little sister. Like, that's Who were you closer to, though? I was closer to my little to sister. To the little sister. Yeah, okay. we're two years apart. Like, when she was born, that was my... That's, that's, like, I'm a, I love you. Like, I love you. Um, can nothing wrong happen to you, and I'm protect you. Like, I literally... Like, if, I felt like she was kind of like my daughter, in a sense. Mm. Like... I'm going to teach you everything you need to be taught or whatever, right. even though sometimes I stirred her wrong. Right. Only when but dealing with my mom. you about that. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm still <laughs> teaching them. Well, yeah, because once I, once like growing up, I was very independent. Like mm. my mom, so my, we didn't have money. Like, okay. My mom was very much like, I can't, if I can't get it for you, I can't get it for you right now. And, and how did you take that? Like when you hear those words, like if I can't get it for you, I can't get it. Yeah, so I took that as I got to do it for myself. Mm, like, okay. you can't get it for me, so I have to do it for me. Okay. Because I can't rely on you for that. Right. You know? Right, right. And so I was very much always the person that kept hearing, like, I can't do it for you. I got to get something for your sister. I got to get sneakers for her. Like, we would get sneakers, like, when Chris when school started, that's when we got our sneakers. Uh, if that. Right. Some clothes, uniform, you know, go to Young World. Oh, I yeah. love Young World. Oh, Young yeah. World was everything. One and time, Ray Jeans. One time I was running around in Young World and um, I lost a necklace. Like, it just dropped off of me. And we looked all over the place for that damn necklace. World. Oh, my God. I was, I have a hat. Like, I don't, I suck with jewelry. Like, that's why I'm not wearing anything. <laughs> I hear you. I lose earrings like nothing. Right. Like jewelry. Like, I don't know. Maybe this is why Chica hasn't proposed yet, but because he knows I'm going to end up losing <laughs> the ring or something. I need to like put you it need on some rings. Hang. You need the real one and, and then the, you need the, the I, one that you wear outside. Yes. Yes. And yeah. maybe a bracelet to hold on to. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Um, but so my mom, you know, couldn't afford to get us anything she worked in a supermarket like right across the street and thankfully like food was never an issue because okay you know we had food stamps and she would always be cooking regardless like she gonna make sure we eat yeah she can't give us everything else but no worries right, right so i had you know took that as i need to be independent for myself mm -hmm. had you know i don't even know what else to say right now <laughs> but was um, that like so okay so you were like the independent one and then what but about we, we all really was independent okay. because my mom, that's why I had said my mom's story because my mom literally told us from the beginning, uh -huh. like, you can't rely on someone else. Mm. Like, hear my story and understand that shit will go wrong. Right. And if you don't have you, nobody has you. Because, you know, she had a whole man, left her pregnant. She's uh, basically homeless. Right. He ain't care. You know, right. my mom had him coming downstairs, seeing my sister at the door. She yeah. Was, that's what you're going to see her at. You ain't coming in this house. She had boundaries. Yo. Yeah, she, she had boundaries. You know, and still this day, it wasn't until, like, my older sister had gotten pregnant mm -hmm. with my niece where she was, like, comfortable with being around them because, you know, right. that's her god, like, grandfather. Yeah. So my mom was like, whatever. But even then, she was like, no, don't invite that man to your baby shower, Melissa. <laughs> she was like, really? I kid you not. I kid you not. Did she, you ever say, like, well... You know, ma, just don't hold grudges. Like, just let it go. It's the past. Like, I definitely have. That is me. Okay. So I am. That's why I get in trouble a lot because okay. I'm the person that's telling you, like, you know what? Like, some things are. You don't need to hold that for that long. Right. Like, it's it's hurting you more holding that. I mean, also, it's not even my trauma to like hold to on bear, to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I let go of my things too. Mm -hmm. Like, my trauma growing up and not having to rely on my family emotionally or. Uh, financially, I had to let that go. I had to like know that they only did the best that they could. Right. Like my dad wasn't there. He didn't go to one. Now one of my graduations. Where was your dad during this? My time? dad. He was. He was always working, okay. but never had money. That was a issue to me. I be damn. <laughs> yo, we would be like, yo, where the hell is this money going, bro? Yeah. And how you always working? How you, you always got working? Ain't got no damn money. That just right. don't make no sense. Right. Two plus two don't equal four. Like, it, <laughs> like what are you talking make about? Make it make sense for me. Yeah. The math ain't mathing over here. So <laughs> he would uh he would go to work at like eight in the morning, maybe before that. Sometimes at six. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and then come home at like 10 o'clock at night. And by then we're in bed or, you know. So you never actually spent time with your dad? Sometimes sometimes the schedule, he would come home earlier. And okay. spending time with my dad, like I felt like I was very much wanting to spend time with my dad. Mm -hmm. So I would watch the baseball game with him. Okay. Like, you know, like, oh, you want your chancletas? I'll get you your chancletas. Like, I would be that child for him. Right. Even though I felt like, like, I, I felt like I wanted to be loved. Mm. Like, I wanted to feel that. Yeah. And I wanted to have a connection with my dad. Yeah. And, n and not for the materialistic things, because he was just still not provide for us. Like, but it was my, more like the emotional. Like, yeah. you wanted the love. It's almost like when, you know, when you want a hug? When you want someone to just hug you. Yeah. And you're like, I just want that. Yeah. I spoke about this. Um, I had Melly on the show and mm -hmm. I spoke about this. And one of the questions that she asked me was, when was the last time like your dad hugged you? And I'm like, I don't think my dad ever hugged me. Bro. I don't think I ever felt like a, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Bro, my, my family, the, also, the other dynamic is that we're not emotional. Like... What about affectionate? Do you guys we're, show... So that... So, yeah, we're not affectionate. You're not affectionate. And we're not... Like, we're emotional when we're arguing. Right. But there is no I love yous. There is no hugs. Like, there's the traditional kiss on the cheek when you say... When you see your family. Yeah. So mommy, so papi. That's as affectionate as it is. Um, but other than that, no. And you want to know some shit? What? I texted my dad the other day. You know, Wait. Cause this Tell is me. the that's the tea, right? Give me the tea. And I ain't got no shade for my my dad or not, cause you know I I love my family dearly, and right. I and I don't hold anything against them for it. That's just that's what they know, right? Like they what they came from, a family of a whole bunch of siblings. Like I'm sure their their parents didn't show affection the right. way. Right, you gotta go to their parents. And yeah. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like my mom, my dad, my grandfather on my mom's side, he was I heard he was a tyrant. Like he wow. was. He was horrible yeah. growing up for them. Yeah. Um. One of my aunts, like, she hates him. Like, mm. even after he passed, she hated him. And we obviously didn't see that version of him. Right. We saw Grandpa that we loved. You know, he's much nicer. Like, I have a, a memory of me playing Nintendo Dogs, and he's, I'm playing the, the dogs, and he starts barking on the other end of the table to the dogs. Like, oh my God. it was like the cutest thing. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. But that's my memory with my grandfather. Right. So I don't really hold anything with my parents, but I try to break these like generational, gener I guess yeah, generational traumas or whatever that we have. Like I want to show affection. I want to tell my family I love them and I want to hear it back. Um, but my dad, like every Christmas, he mm -hmm. doesn't give us anything. Okay. He doesn't. And I guess he never did because he couldn't like okay. even to this day. Right. So we regular Christmas, we all still give him gifts. Because we celebrate Christmas. Right. No matter if you're going to give us something or not, and we know you're not, we're still going to give you something. For and sure. uh, New Year's come, and he gave us cards. And my little sister's like, oh, Dad left a card here for you. And I was like, oh, okay. Wow. He's like, yeah, it looks like everyone has $150 in it. And I was like, oh, wow. And wow. she was like, yeah, right? Like, she's like, yeah, yeah right? Yeah, like, yeah, I was surprised. Like, that's a first? Yeah, it, um. it literally is. Because... I kid you not, no birthdays, no Christmas. Like, I, I don't know what it is about him and gifts, but he just never gave. Mm. And um, so he wrote me, because I just took a while to write to him to say thank you. He mm -hmm. wrote me, and he was like, yo, just want to make sure you got the card. And I was like, yeah, I did. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Like, I hope this new year brings you so much success and happiness. Mm -hmm. And I said, I love you. And he said, igual. And I was uh... like... No, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like the like I love you. It was kind of like, ditto. Yeah, like I was, I was like, this is this, this is the shit that I'm talking. Well, about. when was when was the first time you heard the word "I love you"? That is a good question. When was the first time? Because if you didn't hear it from your dad, then who like where did you hear that from? I think who I just heard you? it from TV, though. Like, that was kind of my knowledge And so when you things. heard it from TV, like, what was the um, emotion association? Like, you heard it, and then did you feel like, oh, I want someone to tell me that? Yeah, 100%. Like, yeah. I, have a, I have this thing of, and I never really spoke to Chicle about it, but he knows it because he sees the way I watch movies. Like, you watch mm -hmm. a Disney movie, and you're like, they're 
about to cry and you're so happy that, you know, the couple, you know, he loves her so much and he wants to do this grand gesture. Yeah. And, you know, and I, yo, even now speaking about it, I could cry right now. Yeah. Just how beautiful and happy it sounds. Yeah. So that's my knowledge of love. And obviously the dynamic yeah. that my family has, even though we never said it, mm -hmm. I knew I was loved. Like my mom right. loves me. You know, she won't hug me. Not that she won't hug me, but, you know, we never really hugged or anything. But how much she provided for us and how she much she... showed it through her actions. Yeah, her sacrifices. Yeah. That woman loves us. Like, right. She went and, like, everything she does is for us. Right. You know? So, but your dad, you didn't... But my dad, yeah, no. I didn't, didn't I didn't that. really, like, I felt like I wanted, I wanted that from him. Like, right. I wanted to... I wanted to be that girl that you loved. Like right. I would, I would, I was more of a tomboy because I wanted to bond with my dad. So it's so it's so crazy that you say this story because I like my. So we have similar stories. Uh -huh. So my dad, um, he wasn't around, and he was the type of my dad made a hell of money. He yeah. made a killing, had multiple businesses. This Damn. man was good. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, but he was like your daddy, like he was so good, but he wasn't good here. Like mm. I'm, I never saw the fruits of his labor mm. ever. Um, and he would tell us like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to come pick you up. Cause he was in Brooklyn. I lived in Spanish Harlem. He's like, yeah, I'm going to come pick you up, pick you up. We would literally be with our coats on. Mm -hmm. Never came. Damn. And I was like. So though, so then growing up, the way it showed up in my relationships, uh -huh. I grew up not, not wanting to date anyone that reminded me of my dad. Ah, like if you even smelled like him, I'm I was crying. like, you said, you said, no, no, absolutely <laughs> not, no, mm -mm, no. So I wonder for you, like, how did that? And before Chickley, like, how did that show up into like potential relationships that you would? Or in school, like, what did that show up as? So, I, so, like I said, I never, like, resented them for it. Right. Like, I still love my dad. Right, right, You right. know, I loved him for the dynamic he had with my mom. Like, he mm -hmm. would always, like, make fun of my mom, like, crack mm -hmm. jokes. It was very humorous. Like, loved him. He never really even came around to my mom's side of the family because he had issues over there. And that kind of like sucked because, you know, I, I love to be around my dad. You know, yeah. I love to see him around my other, like our other families. Mm -hmm. um, so the moments he did, you know, I would, da I would dance with my dad. Like I would make an effort to, to have a relationship with yeah. him. Like you extended yourself yeah. to your dad. I extended myself. So there, there's very many characteristics that I adore of my dad. Like what? Like his humor. His like, okay. I love how he cracks jokes at my mom. And my mom, you know, she's going to crack jokes back. And yeah. um, that's just their relationship. And mm -hmm. obviously they argue, you know, and they still love each other and they still, they're committed. Um, Would you say that was like unconditional love? Like what you saw in that, between your mom and your dad, was that like unconditional love? Hmm. Or did your mom have boundaries? Did her love come with conditions, with boundaries? Like, if your dad did something, it was unacceptable. That, mm, that is a really good question. <laughs> you got some good <laughs> questions. <laughs> my mom, so my mom is very independent. Okay. She doesn't rely on my ma on my dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, she never really, like, my dad didn't pay rent for the whole life of growing up. He mm -hmm. didn't. Uh, my mom took care of that because she had to. Um, And so... I don't want to say, like, my mom put boundaries on them because she could have, like, even me and my sisters, like, we'll tell my mom, like, yo, you can leave him. Like, you're not, don't stay with him. You because, said that? Yeah, we would tell my oh, mom wow. all the time because you know what it was? My dad never really prioritized my mom. Mm. Like, they worked because they want to make it work. And right. But if you're looking at a relationship and what I look for in a relationship, I want you to take me out on dates. I want you to... Like, emotionally be here for me. I want to feel loved the way I've seen on TVs. Right. You know? I right. want that. Yeah. And, um... Did you watch The Notebook, by the way? I have seen The Notebook. <sighs> <laughs> Come on now. I've seen all romantic comedies <laughs> and... <laughs> um, but my dad didn't do that for my mom. Right. And me and my sisters... It was me and, um, me and my little sister mainly. We're, kind of, we're like... We're the... 
the very talkative ones. Right. The very like, we're going to speak our opinions and we don't give a damn. Right. And I told her to do that because I did that. Mm -hmm. uh, even though she's a Sagittarius, she's going to do it regardless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's going to do it regardless right. anyway. <laughs> um, but I can't. I, I, she had a good lead up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she did. So... I would, we would tell my mom, like, yo, you could go get yourself another man because he ain't doing shit for you. He's mm -hmm. not. He's my father, regardless or not. But, you know, and even growing up, I would tell my dad, like, yo, why don't you take mom out? Mm. Take her out, do something what for would her. What he say? He wouldn't, he wouldn't say anything. Mm. Like, and because I learned how to talk to him instead of attacking him and being like, oh, you're not doing this for mom. Like, you're horrible. I would just uh, suggest the idea of like, yo, you should take her out to dinner or something. That's good. And so like the past, I want to say the past five years or so, because that's kind of more where I've gotten vocal with it. Mm -hmm. um, he showed up, you know, he got a, Chris, he, th he threw a whole party in DR. He took care of it financially. He didn't wow. ask for any of us to pay for anything. Um, and, you know, normally my dad would go to DR by himself. Yeah. Just because my mom couldn't take vacation days when he would. Mm-hmm. But it also seemed like you just trying to get away. That's what it seemed like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we were there all in DR at the same time. And he took her out. He took her places, explored her wow. um, a few times in the summer. They went to the pier together. He took her to his like nephew's house with him. Nice. And yeah, he showed up. And we were like, finally. Finally, yes. because we've been telling mom to leave your ass <laughs> for a while now because you're not about to treat our mom, a mother who sacrificed so much. Because our mother, like, we love her because we yeah. know how much she's done for us. We know, we've seen it. We see how much she sacrificed and she deserves more than that. Yeah. But I'll be damned if you, a man who gets fed every night because mommy is still going to do the things that she was taught to do. Right. Take care of right. the house. Like, I have to feed my husband. Like... Point blank, period. Laundry has to be folded. You know, laundry has to be done. The house has to be clean. She's going to do that. And then you have no decency to take her out to prioritize her. Yeah. And then sometimes complain about the fool. You got some nerve. Like, yeah. father or not, like, get that's it right. together. Yeah. You know, so that's really much the dynamic of my family. Right. <laughs> right. So then now, okay, when, so when you got like an inkling of like, okay, this is not right. Mm -hmm. And this is not how I want my life uh -huh. to look like. At what age were you? When that thought happened in your mind, like, I don't want this to mirror my life. That didn't start until I got with Chicla. Mm. Um, I, growing up, like relationship wise, I've always kind of, I, I always told myself anything young didn't last. So any, what does that mean? So any relationship mm -hmm. that I was in, like in high school, I knew it wasn't going to last. Did like, you really? You never thought like, oh, you're the one? No. 100%. No. Really? Any relationship, if it ended, it, I was so, it was so quick to be like, all right, I'm done. And you was cool with it? Yeah. I knew nothing was... I, well, I, the reason why I thought that, and I still stand by it, is because you grow. You change. You want different things. You know? You have an experience with someone and then, you know, for whatever reason, they're not the one for you. Mm. And I was just okay with that. And I knew that if anything started really early, that it would just, it would be like too much. Yeah. Like you, then you were in like a 15 year relationship at like 22 or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Never experienced in life. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw a future of myself like experience and like, you know, dating before I actually settled down. So... But what were some of the things that you wanted? Like, let's say high school. What uh -huh. were some of the things that you wanted out of life? Like, what did you want to be? What did you tell yourself? I want to be this when I grow up. Like, I knew I wanted to be I, an actress, for sure. Yeah, I wanted to be an actress. I wanted okay. to be a dancer. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be an accounting. Um, what did you go to school for? I did. I went to QCC. Mm -hmm. And I had actually... So this is the funny story. And this is how the universe just works out. So, mm -hmm. you know... My mind works like the air, like the wind. Yeah. It's all flowing in 10 different directions. Like I can't even tell the like a direct story of how I was raised. I'm jumping from different points. I'm with you. I'm yeah. following you. I'm following you. I I'm the here. audience is following too. Cause no, I know. they're following you. <laughs> they're going to bring back. back. Yeah, they're going to be like, wait, <laughs> she <laughs> went from here. We was in DR just a minute ago. We was in DR. 
<laughs> now we in high school. Copy. And he ain't go to no graduations. And then uh, <laughs> he came back. She love him though. Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> also, I, this, but the, it's the way my mind works. Right. And just the way I am. Right. So um, in high school, I was serious about taking accountant, like being an accountant. Really? You know? Yeah. You I liked math? I loved math. God, math was I hate my math. favorite subject. Seriously? My favorite subject. Oh I was so God. good at it. Algebra, that was me. Finding really? X, yeah, I'll find them. And in real life too, <laughs> where he at? Like where where's we doing? So Yo, you know, I love Numbers and letters yeah. always trip me out. I could not. I mean now, like without the practice, I've gotten like hot like Steven a cheek letter, sorry. Uh, he would <laughs> yeah, yeah. he would uh he would clown me. He's like, You suck now with math. So I, I, it's hard for me to believe that you was going to be an accountant and not actually good at it. And I was like, first of all, practice, okay? So, I know how to count them checks, baby. Yo, I know how to count. I, I know where to move the money, yeah. huh? <laughs> So um, you wanted to be an accountant. Yeah, so I wanted to be an accountant. And I was dancing at this time. Okay. Like, I was still practicing dance. I started dancing in, like, seven, in eighth grade. Okay. Um, My friend... Um, but like, okay, let me go back a little bit. So I did theater. So now we're going back, guys. We're going yeah, back. Yeah, we're going back. We're going back. <laughs> okay. So, so wait, give me school, an age when you go back. In middle school, okay, sixth middle grade. School. There we go. We got sixth Copy. grade. How old are you? Like 11? 11, 12, yeah. Yeah, 11 to 12? Yeah, yeah. Um, I did, I uh, like the drama club when I first love. started. Yeah, yeah, love. Um, and then in I think drama club had an end or something like that. We didn't have to. We didn't have it anymore or something like that. Um, and then seventh grade, I started taking dancing class. Mm. Like I just took the class. Like I didn't join the team or nothing. I would just take it and substitute for gym. Okay. And then I I had a friend and she was like, "Yo, you should sign up for the dance team for next year." So I'm like, "All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna sign up." Like you know, but Why I'm not? very open. Yeah. You yeah. know. And she was adamant of having me join the team. So she was the dance teacher's favorite. Cause she was like, yeah. she started in sixth grade. She had crazy flexibility. She was the best. She was the all-star. Yeah. And she wants Melanie on the team. So Miss Godinez, she's gonna get Melanie, she's gonna put Melanie on the team That's for her. Right. You know, and I'm very like committed, like and disciplined. Like if mm -hmm. I wanna do something, I wanna do it right and I'm gonna learn. Like mm -hmm. so when I was go. I would go spend my lunch time in dance class, and I would learn like the positions of ballet because I had no nice. ballet training. You know, I didn't know nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, my dance teacher actually told me, and she said, um, "I said I can't do it," mm. and she said, "Don't you ever say you can't. That's not in your vocabulary. You mm -hmm. can't." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that forever stuck with me because mm. once she told me that, I was like, "Damn, you're right, bitch." <laughs> you is right. <laughs> she unleashed something else. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, when I was younger, before that, I wanted to be a model. You know, America's Next Top Model. You was there. Stuff. Yo. You was on the show. You was Yo, You was ready for Tyra. Uh, Tyra was, saw me like this, <laughs> serving, and she was like, yes. And I made it all the way to the end, and I won. It sounds like you visualized your life. I did. It and sounds the, like you really, like, even before visualization became a thing, it sounds like you kind of already had a picture in your mind of what you wanted your life to be like. And I didn't even know it. Weird, because right? Because it was, it was so, it's so funny because it's so random. Yeah. And I trusted that the, all the things that I wanted, mm -hmm. I would have. Like, I would, I would be all those things. I don't see why. Why can't I be a model? Why can't I be a lawyer? Why can't I be uh, an accountant? Like, well, let me ask you. Uh huh. Because I know I asked you when was the first time you heard someone say "I love you." When was uh -huh. the first time you heard the word "no"? Someone tell you "no," you can't do that. Oh, I hear that all the time. Not all the time, but I've been always very doubted. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't take like. I don't, I don't hear no. I just hear that, all right, I just have to work harder. I have to do more. I just have to, you know, because there's always a way. Right. There's always a way. Like, there's endless possibilities. And I am grateful for the way my mind thinks because there is not just one way of doing things. Like, if something's not being screwed on, right, like, there's another way to screw it on. For sure. There's another way to do something. Like, there's, there's the... The thought of something not being possible doesn't exist right. because there's always a possibility. Um, so, you know, in eighth grade, I was dancing. And then 
Um, we went off to high school. I went to Family Academy, which is like a really small high school. I, I didn't even okay. want to go there. I wanted to go to like Transit Tech. And I still wanted to keep dancing. At first I didn't continue it, but then I ended up like, I don't know if I reached out to the dance teacher or if the dance teacher like told me to come back or something, but mm -hmm. she let me come back to the after school program. And I was dancing with the middle schoolers there and I got to still practice for free, which was great because I've wanted to dance since I was a little girl. Like I yeah. wanted, and also, a horseback riding. That's a whole separate. Really? Sorry, ADD. Yeah, I wanted to be a horse race. Like I wanted to be a racer. You live multiple lives. Yo. In the child. <laughs> like, I wanted to do a lot of really? things. It takes a lot to raise a Gemini. <laughs> Yo. But I couldn't have any of that. I had none right. of that. Like you know, and that was, you know, you could decide to, the perspective you have in life, you decide. Mm -hmm. So if someone says you can't do something like that question, like what if you say no? Well. Am I going to hate my life, be miserable because I heard no or because I can't live the life that I want? Or am I going to be like, OK, not this moment and there's many possibilities. Um, that seems like more of an option for me yeah. to be hopeful right. than to not. Right. And then to be sad and, you know, I hate my life. Like, right. I don't want to do that. I love my life. I'm grateful that I'm alive. I'm grateful that I'm here and get to have experience and speak with people, share energy, and yeah. you know, feel that. You know, a lot of us take that shit for granted. So I, that was a tangent. No, <laughs> I love that. It doesn't sound like you were, and, and it, listen, correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't sound like you had, um, like you suffered from depression or you were like depressed or sad about your childhood. No. It sounded like you, you went through your trials and tribulations, right? And mm -hmm. you looked at it and you said, okay, I, I see These you. are the cards that I would doubt. And yeah. I'm going to figure it out. Mm -mm. It sounds like that. Yeah. Where I, with me, I was crying about my dad. Like, why don't you love me? Yeah. <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, growing up, I kind of, my family was very numb. So I, I had all those experiences, but, you know, I never really cried about it. A post from my little sister, like, she had her no. If she heard no, it was... Oh my God! I can't believe you're not getting me this and this and the third. And it she was, was a like, tantrum. it was a tantrum for it. it and I would consistently look at it like, why are you even doing that? Yeah, like, what's the point? Yeah, but she always got her way. She always, even after after the tram, after the tantrum, she would end up getting her way. And I didn't see that like, oh, I should do that. Like, I still wasn't a tasteful of that right. way of getting things. Um, but it was just so interesting to see that dynamic, like to have that dynamic growing up. Especially with my little sister, you know, I want the best for her. You know, I want her to be a certain way, but she's still who she is. Right. And I can learn right. from that. But um, who do you feel like you're most like, your mom or your dad? That's, damn, you wouldn't know these good questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, or do you see like both qualities in you in I some do. sort of way? I do. I know? do see both qualities. Um, my dad kind of taught me to like, Whenever I did see my dad. <laughs> right, right. But um, my dad taught me, like, he would bring projects home. Like, you ever see, like, your parents ever brought, like, something from the street that they found in the garbage? I'm like, what? Garbage? Like, yeah. what? Like, what? Give me an example. One time my dad brought a fan. He saw a fan, <laughs> and he brought it, and he rewired it I to try that. to work. That shit ain't work. <laughs> that did not work. So, you know, my dad was always a fix-it person, though. Right. So he taught me, how, like, watching him, like, always trying to rework things and fix things that were broken kind of taught me that you could fix things that are broken. Like, right. That's not always the case. And seeing my mom's, like, dedication and devotion to, like, you know, work and, like, we didn't miss no days of school. Mm -hmm. And school, we had to get good grades because my mom wasn't educated. She didn't have that, and she wished she could. Like, she yeah. wished, like, I have an aunt. She don't know how to read. She don't know how to read or um, or write in Spanish, and that's her main language. And, you know, that's I'm like, crazy, yeah. yeah, that's, like, a little sad. Like, it, it broke my heart, it's, like, to yeah. find that out in this year. You found out. This, this year, year, I found that out. Like, I, wow. I was talking with my aunt, and I think I tried to show her something. And oh, she told me to to lay a and and I was like, wait, she was like, no, don't say le. And I was like, mm. what? I was like, Thea, this is your first language. Like, nah, we gonna have to do something about that. Like, yeah. at least like let's let us teach you something. Yeah, you know. 
But that just showed how poor they came from. Like, they d didn't have that privilege. Opposed right. to my dad, he was able to go to, like, ninth grade yeah. and learn from stuff and write. Um, but my mom was really adamant about school because she didn't have that shit. Yeah. So, yeah, God yeah. forbid, we failed a class or... No, we didn't fail a class because, you know, my mom was very strict about... Aquí no. Yeah. And my mom was old school, so I did get my ass whooped a few times. A few, many times. And Ditto. Yeah. Ditto. <laughs> I, Ditto. I remember one time I had like back talk to my mom on our way from daycare and nobody better come for my mom because I love that bitch and I don't care. <laughs> oh, that's dope. And, yeah. um, but so I was coming back from daycare with her mm -hmm. and I had said something sassy to her. I had said something well, because I was I was fresh with my mouth. Right. And you couldn't tell me nothing. My mom had us working at her supermarket at 13. So... You can imagine. Right. You got me working, uh, you can't tell me shit. I don't care. Like, right. point blank period. That was my mindset. And so this was younger than that, though. And I had told her something, and she was she just looked at me and was like, hey. When we get a twist. Okay, bro. I put rat. one toe at the door. <laughs> and I went flying inside. And I was like, oh, God. I was like, oh, God. And she was like, nunca me hable así a la de la gente. There was nobody even around us. <laughs> there was nobody around us. And I was oh like, what God. are you? Oh my God. I was like, then I ain't learned my lesson because I ain't give a damn. <laughs> oh my but God. I was like, Jesus, mother, relax. Did you fear your mom? Because I feared my mom. I did not fear my mom. I fe to this day, I fear my mom. It's the weirdest thing. My mom probably hated the fact that I didn't fear her. She was like, this bitch. But my mom would also like, this was the little trauma that she would do. What was she the would, trauma? She would do this. So after she'll beat my ass, right? Uh -huh. Send us to our room or put us in a corner and, and anything right. gone. Right. After we were being punished or whatever, she'll come 20, 30 minutes later. Mi amor, quiere algo de comer? Uh -huh. And we're like, like, no, I'm confused. what the hell are you talking about? You just beat my ass, mom. <laughs> like, what? What did just happen? <laughs> So that was like the part where we were like, I guess, kind of like mind fucked us. Right. And not that she was doing it on purpose. Like, I don't know what's the proper definition of this shit. But, you know, maybe she just got over the fight. Like she just right, had to discipline right. us. And that was the only way that she knew how. And she wasn't angry about the situation anymore, you know, but she don't want you to keep holding anger on her. Right, right, right. But me and my little sister, we had to process that shit. And we're like, bro, what the fuck? Like, what just happened? Like, no, I don't want to eat. But then also at the same time, yes, I do want to eat. I'm still <laughs> mad at you, though. <laughs> yeah, I was a stubborn little girl. Like, my mom would, like, discipline us, and then I wouldn't speak to her. I would be like, no. She'd yeah. be like, uh, quiere comer? No. No. <laughs> no me habla. Ya. The silent treatment. Ya. I'd be like, no. And she'll, be, she'll look at me like, what is wrong with my daughter? I'm like, no, that's Yo, it. Yeah, you put your like, boundaries. Like, you can't just discipline me and then think you want to come back. Yeah. I'm cool on you. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you I don't right now. Talk, now. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, when was the first time you had, like, a real boyfriend? A real, my first Like, real. a real, real, like, like, that was your man. Oh, see, I don't even really... <laughs> Chinkla is my first real, real boyfriend. Really? Well, like, I had a boyfriend in high school. Uh, we were together for two years. Okay. But, like, m my boyfriends were very much my friends. Like, he was my friend. Right. So, right, right. like, we ain't do nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, I think maybe, like, kiss or whatever. But we ain't do nothing after that. No, no any more bases. There was none existed. And we were together for two years. Went to prom together and everything. Oh, that wow. was my first, I want to say... First, like, long relationship. I had, like, some other relationships. I had one relationship in, like, eighth grade um, where the guy tried to, like, um, I liked him for a while. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, oh, my God, I want you. Because always, I'm always a person that, like, if I want somebody, I'm going to get him. Like, I got Chiclet. Like, I wanted Chiclet, and I got him. Like, that's how, that's we me. We're going to get into that. Despite if you like me in the moment or not, you will. That's right. Period. Love. And so, you know, he... He did some weird shit, but he was like, show me you love me. Because I think, I don't want to say, I don't know if that was the first time I ever heard I love you or something. But he was like, show me you love me. And I was like, I don't know how to fucking show you I love you. Mm -hmm. He ended up breaking up with me after two months. And what? I was like, wow, this motherfucker's a liar. 
he didn't want me for that. He wanted me to see if he can get in my pants and shit. Mm -hmm. And then he taught me, he, he taught me like a lesson because I was like, ew. What was the lesson? The lesson was, uh, you know, sometimes these motherfuckers will come over here. I don't even know if I could curse. Go I'm going crazy. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. I ain't going to stop you. I ain't going to stop you. You know, there's sometimes that, you know, it's very important to see the people that have good intentions for you and they don't. Right. Because I like them a lot, but he wanted to move faster than what I wanted to do. And that was not okay. So I had to let him go. Well, he let me go, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to tell the story a different yeah. way. <laughs> I had to let him go. <laughs> let me ask you, because. Growing up, I did like a, you know, when you work on your like inner child uh -huh. and in my therapy sessions, I wrote like a list of what I wanted from a man. Uh -huh. So I said, you know, I want him to be generous because I didn't want anyone cheap. Mm -hmm. So I was like generous. I want this someone that came from a good family um, because I am very family oriented. Um, I wanted someone who definitely got along with my mom. Like, that was a big thing. Like, mm -hmm. if you didn't get along with my mother, there was a, a whole problem there. Mm -hmm. um, but there was, like, just certain things. It wasn't like I said, I want tall, green eye. It was nothing mm -hmm. like that, but there the was quality. Yeah. yeah, there was just characteristics uh -huh. that I knew that I wanted from mm -hmm. a man. Was there something in your mind, maybe you didn't write it down, but in your mind you knew, like, okay, this is what I want from a man. Yeah. Sorry about the drift because we was talking about that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the the humor like that my dad has, and um, that was a big one. That was like mainly the main one. I don't yeah. care about anything else. Can I like actually find you funny? Right. Because there's guys that are corny, that are whack, and like can't take a joke or can't joke with you. And I hated that. That was the real like. The real like point for Chiclet, like he made me laugh crazy. So and he then, checked that box. Yeah, for you. and he and he would make me laugh in ways that other people were incapable of doing because he had his own comedy that I loved. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, you was different. I mm -hmm. like you. You right. Okay. You never looked at him and said, mm, that humor maybe is a little too dry for me. Does Not he, at him, no, never, no, he, he, no, no, hell no, no. Was no, that no. love at first sight? I wonder. No, no, it was not. It was not. We hated each other at first because I had invited them to a party that wasn't lit, and I told them it was because I. <laughs> you like how you start the relationship <laughs> off with a lie? But we, <laughs> it wasn't even gonna be a relationship. It was, <laughs> you know, I didn't know. Like, all right, so this is the story about that. So I had a tattoo artist. He was my friend. We was like best friends. Right, and they were gonna go out to this EDM party and I knew it was going to be trash. But since they were going out and I hadn't seen my guys in a while, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. Brought my older sister out. Mm -hmm. We go in. We there before them. And they call me and they're like, yo, we're trying to figure out what party to go to. Um, Let me know how that one is. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I was like, yo, you got some damn nerve acting like you were supposed to link me up over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. wasn't trying to go to no other party. I had walked over there. Right. Like, I lived so close to the party. I was just like, I'm going to walk. So, and I had to work early the next day. So, I wasn't trying to be out all night. Right. <laughs> right. So, I told Wait, what them, was your job at that time? I was a cashier. You was a cashier. Yeah. Happy. I worked at a supermarket. The um, Associated is, I don't know if you know Star Rice City. You're in the Bronx. So I'm in the Bronx. Um, but I worked at a supermarket in Star Rice City in Brooklyn. Okay. So, I'm at this party and they called me, asking me. You know, how is it? And I tell him, it's lit. Pull up. I ain't want them to go anywhere else. So Chica pulls up with my friend, and he's like, he's looking. There's like 10 guys on the wall, and he's like, who's the bitch that told you this party was lit? And my tattoo artist knows me. I'm spicy. So he points, uh -huh. and he he's points at me, and he's like, her. And he's like, yo, I don't fuck with you. And I was like, yo, I don't fuck with you either. And that's how we started. <laughs> That's how we became, that's how we, that was our first interpretation of each other. Our first, what's the word I'm looking for? Our first um, impression? The impression. first impression okay. of each other. And then ever since then, we kind of had like a little like front of me banter for a while. And then we hung out. Like Chicle didn't know I was going to be there, but we would go into a restaurant for Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm -hmm. And um, I was there. And uh, we hanging out with my tattoo artist, my cousin, and Chicle, and Chicle's telling us this hilarious story. And then I, that's where the moment where I was like, nah, 
I kind of, I like, I think I like this dude. Like, he's so funny. Like, yeah. there's, there is nobody else like him. And, you know, we kind of spoke more at that time. And then Chiclet deaded me. Like, he stopped talking to me for a while. Why? And just I. Just like, he just stopped? Like, yeah, I'm, he um he was ve- like he said that I I came on like a little too strong like he didn't like not that a little too strong but he knew I liked them a lot and he didn't have the same feelings for me so he mm. didn't want to mislead me that was the thing okay but we ended up like rekindling months later okay. and that's when we like actually started hanging out more like he loved to have me around he even paid a few times because I told him I was broke I was a broke bitch yeah like. <laughs> I would get paid like $100 a week or something like that. And I have to put gas money. I have to help my sister with the car or right, whatever. Right. Like right. a whole bunch of things. Like my money's gone within a week, right, a week later. I'm, yeah. <laughs> like I'm trying to get this tip money right now. Like that's what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he would pay for, to hang out. Like he would pay for me. And, and where would you guys go? We went... Sometimes we'll go to Crazy Willie's. Oh. Um, that's like that's in Richmond Hill. Uh we would go we went to this bar called Thirteen Steps. That was actually like the first time I told them I loved them. And what? I didn't do it wait, on wait, purpose. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Hold up. You can't you can't just breathe. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> you can't you know what I'm saying? That's how we lose our audience. Hold up. You said it first? I did, but I didn't do it on purpose. I was drunk. And <laughs> okay. like to like even I remember it. I re- not remember saying it. I remember like wanting to say it, but I said I really appreciate you. That's what I said. Okay. And um, he then tells me later the day that I ended up saying it anyway. So I was like, wow. But did you chalk it up to like you being drunk? Did you say nah, I was no? No, I felt that way. So I you did. Said, yeah, I did. Like you know, when he d- wasn't in my life. I, that's when I realized that I really did love him. Like, I really mm. did care for him. And it was what it was. Like, I wasn't going to chase you after. I was going away to SUNY Brockport. This is when, uh, so I graduated um, my community college right. with a business administration and accounting degree. Come on now. Uh, my plan at that moment was to go to Baruch and study to be an accountant. Right. Um, and I had, I was also still dancing outside. Like I was, I was in a company called Dance Wave. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the teachers, she told me, she was like, um, why aren't you dancing in a college? And I was like, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, how to, I, I, like yeah. I, I applied when I was 18, but, um, I had got accepted to SUNY Brockport that mm-hmm. time. Like I went, I drove all the way to Rhinebeck to go have an audition with the head, like one of the head teachers. Um, he was like one of the main, like um, I think his, I don't want to say his name was David. It wasn't David Dorfman, um, but either way, one of the main teachers, one of the head teachers, and he accepted me yeah. uh, outside of the fact that my technique wasn't the best because I don't have, like I didn't come from ballet training. Like mm-hmm. my technique was not it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so he accepted me outside of that. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, like, I I didn't understand the steps I had to take after, like, mm-hmm. for SUNY Brockport. And I really, I think a part of me really wasn't ready to go six hours away for school. It was just a lot happening um, at that time, at that, time okay. that just didn't make sense for me to like I had to send my transcripts I think I still had to get accepted into the school okay so okay. I got accepted to the dance department mm-hmm. but you still have to get accepted to SUNY Brockport yeah so I still had to send my transcripts and it was just a lot like things would get missed like it was just I think the universe was doing it for me like right. mm, bitch it ain't just hot like, yeah. <laughs> go to QCC take you two years do this extra time you know and then let's figure it out later. Yeah. yeah yeah and so when the teacher had said that, I kind of realized, like, wait, I could transfer into a dance school. I could. I could do this. So I reapplied to SUNY Brockport. Mm-hmm. I got in. Nice. And I spent another two years in SUNY Brockport. Two years and, like, a half because they were trying to keep me there for extra time. And I was I was studying my accounting degree at the same time. Mm. But they had me fucked up. Because they Why? be wanting, wait, because, <laughs> wait, what? Why? Because they want mad prerequisites. 
And, Hello, and, that's what it's about, though. Yeah, yeah, but not. Nah, th- they went, when I tell you how many they wanted, how many? I would have lasted a whole nother four years in that school. Oh no, no, no! I'm 21 already in this school. There's no way I'm lasting another four years in Sunny Brock or with the trees and the leaves and the cows up there. <laughs> I'm not doing that. It was dead yes. up there. I couldn't do that. I couldn't, I couldn't. I'm a city girl. Right. I'm a city right. girl, bro. I kept seeing like New York City so far, and I'm like, I want to be lit with y'all. Yeah. I want to be so lit with y'all. And I'm not. I'm over here. I yeah. felt so alone. Like, it was no good. And I had... So that's probably when you felt depression. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably yes. when you felt it. That's exactly when I felt... I felt very, like... You felt alone, like, sad? Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And me and Steven, we had just started dating. Me and Chico, sorry. He's like... It's okay. You can call him. Yeah. Like, this is a real <laughs> podcast. You could be as real. We welcome realness yeah. here. Um. <laughs> so he... We had just started dating, and mm-hmm. we automatically went into a long-distance relationship. Mm. And it was tough. You know, he broke up with me, like, every other two weeks or something like that. Like, I would see him, like, once a but month. But why? Was it because of the distance that he broke up with uh-huh. you? Or it was, was just too much. Like, okay. the distance was a lot. He, you know, he spent the whole summer with me, loved it, had such a good time, and now I'm not here. Like, you don't get to feel me. You don't get to experience me in the real life. Like, it's... FaceTime calls, you see me once a month, if that, yeah. you know, like if we could get a bus ticket or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a lot for him. And I would consistently remind him like, yo, like, you know what? Like, let's keep at it. Like, come like, on now, like I'm out. coming back home. You know, I'll be back. This isn't forever. So let's keep going, you know? And yeah. he would end up coming back to me anyway. Now it wasn't even like that crazy of yeah. a breakup. Yeah, yeah. Um, but after that, you know, That was a lot emotionally, like even the long distance, because it made me not even want to be in school anymore. Like I I wanted Mm -hmm. to hurry up and get my degree and go. You know, I came here for dance. I'm doing that. I get an experience. Let me get my dance degree and get out of here. Right. So I dropped my accounting major because I was like, if I really wanted to do accounting, I could do it in in Baruch. Mm -hmm. There's schools down there that have great extensive you know, accounting degrees. So you were already looking at other alternative alternatives. Yeah. Okay. If I wanted to continue accounting, I could have. Okay. Know? So I ended up getting my degree and mm-hmm. I dipped. And I don't know. Well, now we have like a few months. And then Chicla was like, you know what? I want to do social media for real. And let's pause that. Real okay. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, Hold I was on. already. Yes. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to bring the audience back in. Okay. Did you meet his parents at this time? Yeah. Okay. What was their reaction to you? Um, after- Did they accept you? Were they loving? Like, what was that like? So, at first, like, because we were long distance, uh-huh. um, when I would come, I would come and hang out. I would sleep over at his house mm-hmm. like, for the weekend and then uh, spend majority of my winter break with him and also my summer break. Mm-hmm. I would just be at his house all the time. So there was a lot of conflict in um, that house because I was spending so much time there and they wanted me to contribute like financially. They're like, well, we can't do this. We can't right, like you're another. here. Yeah. So like, right. What can't like, you gonna put money up for rent or something like Chicla, what, what are you doing? Right. Um, so there was that drama. And and how did you handle that? Like, what were, were you at that? Did you make a decision to put money up? Like, what um, was that like? Chicla, he paid rent. He put okay. he put more money. He paid it. He paid rent. Okay. To kind of like contribute for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he never about, asked yeah. me to pay money because I also didn't have money. Like, I right. was in school and I don't. I'm a broke bitch. Right. Like, I don't have anything. Right, right, right. So, um, that was that issue, and then um. I don't even know what happened after I graduated, but I basically ended up moving in anyway into his room with him. Did um, you and his mom get along? Like at first, we're we're closer now than okay. we were back then. Like obviously, she don't even know me from a hole in the wall. Um, but there's like, and not animosity, but. I don't know. I don't want to say that she just didn't take me well at first or, you know, it's new. Like, this is the first girl that your son is bringing and, you know, you see him treat her differently than the way, like, he don't really show you affection the way he does for her. Mm. So th- I feel like there was a lot of those things. Um, and, Do you think you know, there was jealousy there? I, can't, I don't want to speak for her. Okay. I don't want to okay. speak for her. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. 
Okay. I went and yeah, I can't speak for all. Um, but I I there could be because you know, your son, you you want that. Right. That's your, and it was just different. It was new. Like she wasn't accustomed born. to seeing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Is yeah, he an yeah. only child? No. Okay. But he was her she had him at fifteen and got it. And um yeah, that's how that's how Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wherever he goes, she go. Yeah. Like that's the love of her life. You know, mm-hmm. I'm gonna hold you down. You my you my son. Like mm-hmm. you know, I get that. And there's a, a another girl in, and you know, I'm not used to that. Right. You know. Let me ask you, what was, you know, based on like how you grew up and now seeing his dynamic, his family growing mm-hmm. up, how did that differ from um, like? That was- from mine's? From yeah, from yours. That was that was very different. So Chicle, he would move he moved around a lot. Okay. Um, I didn't. I stood at one house and I shared a room with three sisters. Well, two sisters. Mm-hmm. And um so the dynamic is also different. Like he struggled um in a different way than I did. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't have materialistic things. Um his family was like Christmas. You get multiple gifts. There like, was an abundance. There was abundance of gifts, even though yeah. they were struggle. They struggled as well, but they made sure to give. They made to, it work. Yeah, they made it work. Yeah. Um, my mom didn't do that for us. Like we would go to Toys R Us and we would pick one gift out, and that was the gift he was getting on Christmas. Right. And so you know those were different dynamics. His mom's relationship, or, you know, being a single mother, and also you know then. Finding um, her husband or whatever, it's different. Stephen having a stepfather, like that's a whole other. Yeah. That, that's it a was, whole. You need Chicla to come over here and tell yeah. you that story, like. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was really different. Like even recently, um, you know, we are still growing right. in our relationship. We've been together for seven years, and damn, yeah. that's crazy. And I love that for you. Yeah, guys. and it, it isn't until now that we're like learning about what we grew up with, like, what do we bring up from this relationship, from our past, you Mm -hmm. know, what do we want moving forward, how can we communicate better, because we're, he's a Virgo, I'm a Gemini, we do not communicate the same. I, as y'all see, I communicate the way. I think it's spicy. I think your Mm -hmm. relationship, and this is just outside looking in, right? Uh I think your your relationship with Chicle, it's, it's not the easiest to watch, uh-huh. right? Uh huh. But it's very real, uh-huh. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you guys are like this offline mm-hmm. as well, but I sometimes I feel like, no, there's another side to her that, like, there's a softer side. Yeah. There definitely is a softer side to me, obviously. Right. <laughs> like, I'm like, she, um, I don't think she turns up like that. No, all the I don't. Time. I don't. Um, like, I, I think you give me, like, gushy vibes when you're around him. Like, I just want to love my man. <laughs> but then when you are on social media, you like, you bitch. Yeah. I, but I <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like a diamond. I'm okay. multifaceted. Yeah. So yeah. I do show up and turn up and sometimes like that. Right. And sometimes he turns up and gives it back to me. Like, that's the things that we don't really show online. Is but was this him. like this before social media was even involved? Because... At some point, you guys made the relationship a business. Uh Uh-huh. So before you guys made it a business and made that decision to make it a business, Mm -hmm. were you... What was the relationship? Yeah, what was that relationship? So we we played on that. So he would say... So the way we started, he was doing videos before me. Okay. Um, And he would say, like, something. Mm -hmm. He would say, like, a little thing to see how I would react. Right. And he would see my reaction and then we would be like, all right, let's record it. Okay. Like that's the way it works. So it wasn't like I'm not that person. Like I'm the thing about me is that I'm not black and white. Like I am gray. Like right. I am gonna show up differently in different times and I'm gonna react differently in different times. And sometimes I am a little spicy. We'll be like, fuck out of here, you dumbass bitch. Like, what are you talking about? But let me ask you really quick. And sometimes I'm not. But but did you when he first Turned on the camera. Mm-hmm. Did you feel like weirded out about it? Like what? Is, like what are we? Doing? No. Okay, so you were comfortable. Yeah. In that element. Okay. Yeah. Copy. I'm a performer. Okay. Like, I right. feel very comfortable in any setting. Right. You know. Right, right. So him 
taking it serious. I also was just supporting. Like, I didn't even think about, like, other right. things. Sometimes I'm very, like, blind to things. Okay. I don't know. Or maybe that's something that I need to, like, look into growing up because I was very, like, you know, blind to what's happening in my life and right. not really processing things. So I don't really process things the way I, someone else would. Right. Like, thinking of things and, like, oh, my God, I didn't think of this. So I didn't think of this. And, like, oh, my God, this is going to happen. I don't really think too much. Right. Like, right. I'm, I, I guess, kind of like an airhead. <laughs> well, you're you're action based. Like you're not yeah. gonna spend time overthinking uh -huh. certain things. Yeah, Airhead was like, oh, uh, uh, made it sound like I'm dumb, but it's not like that. No, it's just I like, get, yeah, I guess like in a meditative space, right? Like you're very present in the moment. Yes, and I'm not processing what's happening. I'm not internalizing everything in the moment. It takes a minute for me to process things. Okay, like, holy shit, what the hell just happened? Right. Or okay, wait. Like, even, let's say if someone, like, say something disrespectfully, like, this has happened to us in our relationship. Like, Chico mm -hmm. is very, he's quick to react to things. Right. And I'm not. Like, it takes me a minute to process things. And so that's the whole thing. We used to get into arguments about that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he would want me to react a certain way or quicker. And yeah. it just takes me a minute to process. So, you know, someone would say something and I would, process the disrespect and I'm like oh wait hold up <laughs> but, oh, at, this, what you just but at this point I'm already like walked away from the situation yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I was like damn I should have said something like <laughs> right and then I have to just let it go because at this point it's just pointless but right um that's kind of where I sit in my head and all that stuff so I, so know, you, I don't even know the question you guys <laughs> no I got you I got you <laughs> I'm telling you I'm gonna keep reeling you in so you guys so, okay, so he starts the recording. Mm -hmm. He starts the recording. You follow along. You're like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. We're going to record. Yeah. You guys put it online. Do you remember the first time that you put, you made this public? So the first video we did, I was like, I was doing regular girlfriend, boyfriend stuff. I was doing mm -hmm. eyeliner on his eye, on I his like eyelid. That. And you don't even see me. Like, he's recording above and I'm like sitting kind of. On the, where it's on the bed, he's laying on the bed and I'm sitting like right on his head, uh -huh. like doing the eyeliner. And he's like, yo, this looks trash. And I'm like, you don't even look trash. I'm making you look pretty. Like you, what are you talking about? And he was like, this sucks. Like you need practice. I was like, first of all, I don't need practice. <laughs> this is for you. So, you know, and it was really quick. Right, right, right. And that video like did like 100,000 views or something, like a few hundred thousands or something like that on Facebook. Like it went around and we're like, oh, wow, what the hell? Like. Crazy. Like, I'm, wow. We're funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, yeah. that's a lot. And um, a few months after that, I think we did like a boogie video in the car, him singing like a lyrics. And I'm like, ah, 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 you can't sing that. Like, don't sing that. And um, that video went crazy and went viral. And then um, the first video where he was like, you know what? I'm going to like really take this serious. Um, I was eating an Oreo. And I bit into the Oreo mm -hmm. like that <laughs> instead of like twisting it over. And he was yeah. like, what the hell are you doing? Like he tries to smack the Oreo out of my face. I'm like, bro, I'm eating an Oreo. Yeah. And that video went viral. And then like from that moment on, like a lot of our videos like kind of hit back to back in that same month. Yeah. Like the two Tims, he tried to put it on two Tims. And I'm like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what the hell? Yeah. He's like, it's, fit, it's, it's like a below 30 degrees weather. So now you need two Tims. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, but he's mainly the genius behind all our content. So he does the content creation in the relationship. Yeah, he did in the beginning in for the, the beginning. most part. And then like now at the years, but he can't take it all by himself. You know, sometimes you need creative help. But right. I would throw ideas in there and be like, oh, we could play with this. Like, you know, some Chica like gives is really good at giving a blueprint. Right. Like this is the format we're doing. And I'm really good at seeing a format and I'm like, all right, so I could play with that. I can, right. I can add things in. Right. I just right. need a blueprint. Mm -hmm. So that's the secret thing to our stuff. I probably He's gonna probably going to be upset that I even gave that much. <laughs> <laughs> Was there any hesitation with like, you know, maybe let's not make this a business. Let's just let's just focus on the relationship. We so we didn't think of it as a business. Like I, I think we both didn't know how big it was gonna go. Okay, you know, and we didn't think of the cost of our relationship at all. We didn't process that much in. Right, you know, he he had a goal. He wanted to um make content, take it serious, mm -hmm. and saw the saw the future of it. Mm -hmm. Um. 
But other than that, there was a lot. They're obviously, you know, like working with a partner, if anyone has ever worked with a partner, it's like so hard. it is difficult because imagine like one, you two have different ways of working. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. So now you have to understand that you have two different ways of working. And then two, you see each other all the time. There and is, live with each other. You live with like, each other. You live with each, with each other, other, you work with each other, and you're friends. So you want to hang out, you know? So those four things can bring, like, a lot of drama in a relationship. And it took us, like, many times of, one, uh, processing things. Like, he was very upfront about, like, you know what? I need some space right now. I need some me time before I was. Like, I wouldn't process that our relationship is being at a strain because we are working together all the time. Right. So I would just keep hanging out with him. And even though we'll kind of be nitpicking at each other and like throwing shots at each other and being like really short with each other, um, I probably would have still like kept it going and thinking that that was fine. Like you that know? was normal. Yeah. yeah. And so it was him that was like, you know, and like we need to give each other space. Like we're working together. Like we're doing all of like this too much. And I'm like, okay. You know, I didn't take it too well at first. I was very right. toxic in the relationship in the beginning. Like, I I apologize now looking back at it because I'm like, you know what? That wasn't a right way of me, like, handling this relationship. Like, being jealous and, like, just sometimes I'll shut down and mm -hmm. won't process. Like, I won't say anything. Like, I just won't say anything to you and I'll go by my way and I'll give you exactly what you want. You want space? Okay, I'll give you space. Now you have your space. What? No. You, mm. Is that too much space for you? No, you said you wanted space. So that's not healthy. That was not so healthy So you were playing all. like that sarcastic card, like, oh, this is what yeah, you want? Yeah, this is Ooh. what you want? I'm going to give you no exactly problem. what right. you want. Yeah. Right. It sounds like you were, you were definitely in love, but it sounds like you were growing into love with him. Because I feel like you, you were changing kind of like, you went through phases, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it sounds like you were kind of stubborn at first. You know, in all honesty, like, you were stubborn. You were playing that card. You were, okay, this is this is what you want. You want space? Cool. But then at some point, you came to a realization where it's like, okay, now I need to, like, apologize, mm -hmm. forgive, figure that, whatever that next chapter is. Yeah. I definitely, I, there was a lot of, uh, um, like, you know what? I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Because... Me being that way and then accustoming him to that way and then him being like, well, these are the, this is the cards you wrote now. Mm. You wrote these cards, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and now you're flip-flopping on the cards you wrote. This is, this is what you want, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we're shooting content. Like, we're still making so content. So you still got to, like, like, flip the switch on and off. Yeah, like, it was... The good thing is that, like, we never, if we were beefing in real life, we never recorded. You never, Like, we yeah. never was like, oh, let's force this. We were never going to do that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't show well in content anyway. Right. So, you know, we would have to, like, have a conversation, figure out where the hell we at. We would go back to step one, where we started. Yes. Yeah. Let's go back let's to go the back basics. Let's go back to the basics. You know, forget the shit. Forget the work stuff, you know. Let's get to the core, where we at. We still love each other. We're still here for each other. And we're going to rock out. Yeah. I want to talk about, and I'm going to go a little left, so come so, so come Don't join worry. me. Don't worry. Come join I got me. you. Girl, you know what I mean? I went left and right, and you was over here <laughs> playing double dutch with me. <laughs> I want to talk about um, Latin stereotypes uh -huh. with you. And what do you feel some of them are? Because we do have them in the culture. Mm-hmm. Latin stereotypes, specifically for Dominican or all, all around? You could, we could go Dominican. I'm Dominican too. I'm half Dominican. So we could, we could definitely hit that. We could hit whatever you want. Hmm. Stereotypes. I feel like one for me, while you think of mm -hmm, one. Yeah. I feel like one for me, um, there, there were, there were two, there were a couple actually. So one for me was, you're Puerto Rican from the Bronx, so you must be crazy. Mm -hmm. I heard that a lot. Okay. And that, like, that was a trigger for me. Yeah. I did not like that. Because mm. I'm like, yeah, I live in the Bronx, but my my place is lit. Like, yeah. my place look like Hollywood <laughs> up in this bitch. She over there in the nice side Yo, of the Bronx. I'm a, facts. You know, and then I also heard um, 
the accent part was a huge, and I speak about this ooh, all the time on mm-hmm. the show because the accent played a huge, huge part for me. And it was something that I heard so many times growing up, like you sound like, you know, you're nasal, you sound like Rosie, you sound like this, that it mm-hmm. actually made me hate my voice. Oh. To the point where I believe I had, um, I think I had a, a, a teacher at one point in high school that was like, yo, you should, you know, like apply to jobs in the village voice. You know, you should do voiceovers. And I'm like, I don't, why? I don't, I don't like my voice at all. And she's like, no, 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 you have such a dope voice. I'm like, no, I hate my voice. Aww. And it, it, it just, I, I just, I just hated my voice hmm. so much because Aww. people made me, and people would mimic my voice, which was you even worse. You have such worse. a good voice though. You don't need, I don't even know how someone would mimic your voice. Oh. Girl, I give you like 10 people right now that would do my voice. I can't. <laughs> so was no. there any like stereotypes that you... I just get that I look Puerto Rican all the time. People mm-hmm. always think that I'm Puerto Rican, even though I'm not Puerto Rican, I'm Dominican. But, you know, and like, what does it mean to look Puerto Rican? Yeah. Like, like what does that even mean? Yeah. Um, that was besides it. But, you know, I, I don't... Damn, man. I'm telling you, I'm like... No, it's fine. It's fine. I guess I, 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 I ask that question because oftentimes I hear like, I well, you when well, you said, um, brought like the stereotype that I was living in, like thinking you need to react a certain way because mm. you are Spanish or because you're a woman or whatever, and um, like I thought I had to be jealous. Mm. I thought I had to be a jealous girlfriend because that's what. I'm supposed to do like I'm supposed to keep you in check like no you can't do this like no you can't talk to this person right no you can't like no you need to go here with me or whatever right. even though like going somewhere with me was never really a thing um but the jealousy thing was like I felt like I had to be jealous because yeah I felt like that's the role you have to play um but I'm not sure if it pertains to me being Spanish so you feel like as a Latina you have to be strong I felt like, I feel like I was taught to be strong by my mom. Like I had to be. But in my head it wasn't like, oh, you're you're Dominican, like you have to be strong. Like that wasn't the case for me. But I didn't I didn't need to be independent right. because of that. I well, you know what? I guess the way I'm looking at it is I'm tying that in my head that it needs to that I need to say you're Latina. You need to be independent, mm. you know, but that's not the case because what it would and correct me if I'm wrong, my struggles of being Spanish, the struggles that came from coming like being an immigrant that naturally come with being Dominican or, you know, have taught me that I need to be that I need to be strong, mm. that I need to be independent. Like I can't rely on you because you will fail me. And if I give you that power, what power do I have? Mm. You know? Very interesting. That's very deep. That is. That was that was <laughs> that was very prolific right there. <laughs> you know, the and the reason why I asked too is uh-huh. because I feel like the role that you play, mm-hmm. and this is where we can go back and forth, mm-hmm. but I feel like the role that you play on social media is that spicy, quote unquote, that spicy Latina, right? Yeah. Like what people would consider spicy. Like, mm-hmm. oh my God, look at Melanie. She's so spicy with her man. Like what is going on? Why is she turning up like that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So do you feel like you play off of those stereotypes? I mean, th- th- honestly, that's a part of who I am. Right. That's not, it's not that I'm She's not like, I'm naturally per- spicy. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. I am. And I, yeah. I am going to, like, I would I would respond to people in a way, like, you know, I'm yeah. very quick and spicy. Sometimes Chicle would be like, yo, you're wilding with what you said. And I was like, I saw nothing wrong with it. <laughs> like, I saw what? nothing wrong with what, what I said. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they, there's a lot that plays a role. Mm-hmm. In who and how you are, who you are. Like growing up in in elementary school, I was the only I want to say the only Spanish girl in my class, mm-hmm. and um, you know, and I went to school in East New York, so everyone else is black, and you know they'll make fun of me for being light skinned You know, sometimes you get the little the make fun of each other, like ah, you look, you're so white, you're like white paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, you just have to learn how to have tough skin. 
mm-hmm. and crack jokes back. And, you know, and that's what just comes from being in New York. That mm. spiciness. That, that's a fact. Yeah. I will say that. That spiciness does come from being in New York because we get that a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Like, New York is so tough. Yeah. Like, that hustle and bustle from New York. Like, mm-hmm. you don't have, a, like, a moment. Like, I always tell people, like, a New York minute, that's a real thing. Here. Yeah. That's a whole real thing. That's like, a quick-ass minute. <laughs> yeah. That's a quick-ass minute. <laughs> but then I often wonder, like, with you, like, when, when do you have time or when are you your most vulnerable? Like, when do you even showcase that? Because we don't see that. I know. I don't show that. We, I yeah, don't we don't show. see that with you. I did, Um, like, I want to say last year, I was doing that more. I was showing my vulnerability more. Like, one time I had, like, I was crying. Were I was you? so, I was, I was, it was a horrible day. It was a horrible day. It was a horrible day. And Why? I showed it. I showed Look up. Look at me. No, yeah. Z. Why? <laughs> Why? Well, what happened? Uh, I, Look at myself way. <laughs> one thing, me and Chica had gone yeah. into like an argument, but it was also just a really bad day for me. Like right. it was the argument was not even the like the tipping point of it. Right, right. It was right. just like a full shit show. And I exploded. Like I do a very good job. Like I've been taught to be strong. And what does it mean to be strong? Like, well, you know, and now growing up, I I'm I show emotions. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm frustrated, I'm frustrated. But my mom really didn't show emotions. My dad really didn't show emotion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't really, like, my family really showed me that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we just been taught to be strong. And I think that's from being Latina. Like, that's definitely mm-hmm. what my mom was taught, what her sisters were taught. You know, they don't show emotions. We have to do this. We have to be strong. And, you know, I had to learn, um, well, learning, like, going, doing dance, and, um, you know, speaking to other people, you know, vulnerability is very important. Like, mm-hmm. if I'm crying, I'm crying. And you're not going to make me feel shitty for crying either. That's right. You know, I could cry. And if you have a problem with crying, you should cry too. Right. You know? Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's a sense of release. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like yeah. sometimes you just need there's a good so cry. Much, there's so much power in, like, once you get yo. that, like, yo. There's power in crying. Yeah. I will say that. It for is. For sure. It is. And so, yeah, I was just having that really bad day. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? I'm going to show this because I know I don't show this side of me on social media at all. Like, I'm very, all my stuff is very, like, p- empowering, mm-hmm. you know? Like, don't let no man tell you otherwise. Like, what the hell? Like, no, 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 no. Like, I treat Chicle like a bitch. That's because I, that was, that was like, not that he was this sensitive man that took that. But that is a part of my character where I am that powerful woman and I will say what the hell I want to say, how I want to say it, and you can't tell me otherwise. But do you ever consider his feelings in this? 100%. Yeah? Yeah, 100%. But also, like... Or do you feel like, Chicle, you're a bitch. You could take it. He, well, you know, he likes that shit. (laughs) We, you know, we definitely didn't grow in, like, the healthiest houses. So... What we tolerate is what we tolerate. What mm-hmm. we take as love is what we take as love. But what is the boundaries there? Like, what is the fine line of like, like I, at, at what point do you say, "Oh, now nah, this is disrespectful"? Now you, now you just cross that line. He he put that line. He said, "Um, I can't say SMD to him. Mm. I couldn't. I can't. I can never say that to him. And I can't call him. I don't know if I can say the p word. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can't, I can't call him pussy. Yeah. And you call him pussy like anybody calls him a pussy. He, he will show you that he's not. Right. Like, that's his shit. So, you know, we definitely have put boundaries in our relationship. There mm-hmm. has to be. You know, at first, we were, I was very, like, handsy. Mm-hmm. You know, a slap box. Like, we used to slap box each other. Like, it was wild out. And yeah. when we really got into a relationship, he was like, you know what? I don't want, I don't want this to happen anymore. And I was like, ah, you're a mad whack. Like, whatever. Like, I was just playing. But sometimes playing turns into seriousness and, you know, you can't really, like, then someone's upset. Yeah. So I had to respect that. I had to respect that he was playing boundaries and, you know, um, didn't want to be spoken to in a certain way. Sometimes, like, you know, he, I could still yell at him. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can still yell at him you know that's what we we're gonna do but sometimes he'll yell at me and I'm like yeah I don't want you to talk to me that way no more I don't want that and you know he has to respect that 
Mm. You know, because that's very important, especially with us being together for so long. If you think this relationship was anything like the way it was in the beginning, it's not. Yeah. And I'm so yeah. glad that we're heading in a direction where we're communicating what we want. We're communicating our needs. And, you know, and Chicla was always very transparent about, like, he's a firm believer that nothing, not that nothing lasts forever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing lasts forever. Right. So nothing lasts forever. If this is not working, we do not have to force this. Mm. We do not have to keep this relationship going for views, for anything. If it's done, it's done. If we are unhappy, if I'm unhappy, we shouldn't keep forcing this. Correct. For what? Right. You know? Right, right, right. We had great times before. That's no longer the case. So let's keep it a buck. So, you know, he's very transparent about that. And so at any moment, do if any of us feel like, all right, we don't want this anymore, let's have a conversation about it. What do you want? And if I can't provide you that, then let's keep moving. You guys, I mean, I feel like both of you guys have been transparent, right? Because I mm -hmm. feel like you guys have discussed, he says oftentimes in the beginning, you guys discuss, well, we don't want kids. Uh-huh. Right? That's what he always says. That's what he says. But yeah, I always said says. I wanted kids. He that's says, why I don't know what we, we agreed we didn't want kids. That was a cap. And I, now <laughs> I feel like you low-key, high-key want kids. Mm -hmm. And I've you high-key want to get married. Yeah. I've always wanted kids from the beginning. I always okay. not that I, I that was no rush. Like I'm not rushing for no kids. Like right. I like to I want to go on vacations. I want to enjoy my youth while, you know, with my partner where we don't have a responsibility of where's my kid? Like, oh my god, is this healthy? Like, is it good? Like, where is it? Who's taking care of my kid? Mm -hmm. You know, feeling bad that I'm not with my child because yeah. that's that's what happens to parents. Yeah, of you know, course. they feel, you get that guilt. You yeah. get that guilt of not being with the kid. Of and, course. and and even prioritizing yourself. Like you feel selfish for that. And like, why should you feel selfish for that? But I'm glad that I never had kids younger because the mental state that I had back then, I learned so much yeah, about right. self love and what like boundaries I need to take. Like if I have a kid, best believe I already told my little sister, bitch, if you see me um out here looking crazy because I'm like, I can't leave my child. I can't leave my child. You better smack the shit out of me and right. tell me to book well, a trip right in. now. Yeah, yeah. You better tell me to book a trip right yeah, now. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hold on. Let's forget about, like, let's not forget about self because the, side note, the best thing you could do is prioritize yourself for your kids. That's, that's a whole fact. That's a fact. Nobody wants to see an unpa un unhappy parent and you're just showing them that living life is to be unhappy. Like, yeah. That don't that's mean a that. fact. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've always wanted to have kids. So let the yeah. record be straight. Yeah, but, You've always wanted yeah, that. Okay. But in the beginning of the relationship, I was very flip floppy about marriage. I was like, oh, it's whatever. Like, I'm not really, like, stressing about it. That's not something that I'm like, I want to get married. Are you so, capable of that in the future? what was the transition, though? Because um, now you want it. I was... I and you've been public about it. Like, I want to get married. Yeah, I was... I, I started being honest with myself. Mm. You know, I realized... You know, I've watched a lot of movies, and I love that. Like, yeah. I, wa I want that. I want that. I want you to, like, show your display of affection for me in that way. Mm -hmm. I want to feel like that. Um, not saying that you don't make me feel that way regardless, but I want the just though. Like, right. I want that. Right. And Chicla was very, like, adamant of, like, he's very much, what you want, say what you want. Mm. Don't sugarcoat your shit. Don't give me 10 million excuses for why you want it. Like, oh, yeah, it's beneficial for you because, you know, taxes. And I'm very much, like, I'll give you all the options. I'll give you right, all right. the reasons. Right. You know, not right. like, not realizing that it's taken away about the fact that I want this. Right. Like, that's the bottom line. I don't need to give you 10 million reasons. You don't get, need to give anybody 10 million reasons why you want something. You want something, you want something. So, that was mm. the struggle for him. Mm -hmm. He was very much like, you're not being transparent about why. Because if you want this, and it's just, you want it, 
Mm -hmm. I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. But if you want it, you're saying like you want it because you want to save money on taxes and shit like that. Like, I'm not going to give you a ring because of that. That's, that's what you told them. Yeah, I, I told them many times. I'm I'm not, like, not that I want it because of taxes, but I said it, you know, it's beneficial in the taxes. Yeah. You was trying to reason <laughs> with yeah. him. You know, he made me realize that I have to be honest with myself about the things that I want. But you know one thing that like kind of um, keeps me from being like transparent in that sense is mm -hmm. because if I have, to, if I'm transparent with you and you're not capable of giving me what I want, then I feel like I have to make a decision of either leaving or staying mm. because now I've addressed what I want. Mm. And if I want this really bad, you know, that's not, not that it's not fair for me, but I don't want to, I shouldn't keep you in a relationship that you're not, you don't want that. So the fear of dealing with, with the, the concept, problem yeah. head on so, and then having to make that decision. So if you then tell him, I want to get married mm -hmm. and he tells you, I don't want that. What do you do? Exactly. Is you're that where you're that. at right now? No, not right now. No, now, oh, I've, okay. now um, I've told him that I want to. And he's like, okay, I could do that for you because you say you want that. But if you giving me the flippy, wishy-washy shit, I can't do nothing with that. That right. doesn't seem honest to me. So I had to learn that. You know, I had a, you know, even though the wishy-washy version of me is the person that keeps me safe right. in the possibility that you will never give it to me, mm. you know, because that's why I'm doing that. I'm giving you the pot, like, oh, you know, do I, um, want to get married maybe like you like know, i see uh, it kind of uh yeah maybe you know whatever you, you watch know, the movies like you see that yeah i think i want that <laughs> that right there you know, there's no <laughs> yeah. fear in that yeah there's no fear of rejection yeah. there's no fear of it not happening because i decided for myself that it was something that i didn't necessarily want do you ever fear like if you do tell him something mm -hmm. and in all seriousness like you tell him something that you want and he doesn't, he's not aligned with that want and you got to leave him. Would you make that decision to leave? <laughs> that's three good questions. That's three, yeah, I think that was your fourth good question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think at one point, yeah, it depends. Like, I, um, not so with the marriage, um, because the conversation at hand is like, we have a great relationship. Mm -hmm. I love you. You love me. Um, we have, we We've been committed with each other since the minute we got together. That is nothing to do with a marriage. We've basically been married, you know? For seven years, Exactly. I mean, so uh -huh. we basically had a marriage from the beginning. So for me to say that a piece of paper is going to make a difference for our relationship, it's not. But the gestures and the, and like, the things that come with, like, planning a wedding and, mm. you know, just, like, emphasizing that y'all two are here together and you know, doing things like when we started bringing up marriage, you know, we went to a walk in the park. Like that's some shit that fiancés do. Like they yeah. do things together, like, mm -hmm. you know, and we never really done stuff like that. Yeah. And it was nice. Yeah, it was yeah. nice to like, you know, kind of like, I don't know, the feeling of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, the marriage thing, I, I wouldn't like force. And I also... Not that I went for it, but I wanted to be on his time. And, like, I wanted to be real for us. I don't want it for him to feel like he has to do it because cause the millions of followers want us to get married or because I'm putting him on a clock to do it. I want you to feel that because that's the point of it. Right. I want a celebration of ours. Right. I don't want it to be because you have to. Oh, his time is clicking because right, that's not right. the purpose of it. Right, right, right. And right. that's not the purpose of it for me. Mm-hmm. So... I just want you to show yourself, like, show that. Do the gesture. Um, but the kids, I think the kids, if you literally don't want to have kids. That's a deal breaker? I, 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 right now, it's not because I'm not, the, my clock isn't ticking. But if that, I think that has to be. Yeah. Because it's not, like, if I really want to have a kid and you don't, I don't want to force you to have a kid. Right. And I don't think you would want to force me not to have one. I want one. So I think it's that point where you're like, you know what? This relationship, is. we just want different things. And that's okay. That doesn't take away from anything. You know, a lot of times we don't, in relationships, you kind of don't want to, like, um, hurt the person. Like, I'm, I've been learning about me being the villain. 
I don't mm-hmm. want to be the villain. I and you know, besides the fact that I post being yeah, the villain, I'm sometimes, like, uh, that's wait. the kind of role you play. Yeah, but, yeah. but it's just comedy, right? You know, I'm right, not right. really a villain in real life. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm really a sweetheart. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I've been I've been thinking about that. You know, like I what. Like, sometimes you have to be selfish and be the villain for someone else. Yeah. And that's okay. Because you had to choose you. You had to make that decision for yourself. What's the most challenging part of your relationship with Chicle? Communication. <laughs> that's so easy. It's so... Yeah. It's because we see... We but com- I feel like he's learning, right? No, he's so good. Like, he's... He's much better. I think he... Not that he's much better at communicating than me, but he... um, He's direct. Okay. So what he says he means... I'm a busher, not a busher, but I am. I, I speak in riddles. Like I don't. Yeah. I move better than I speak. Like I can't even be on a tangent. Like I, <laughs> you know. So we will many times be arguing and saying the same thing, mm-hmm. and we don't see that because mm-hmm. also we have our walls up. We're thinking we're getting defended by things, and you know we're not listening. We're not mm-hmm. taking the time to be like, you know what? They're not attacking me. Let me listen. That's right. You know, That's so right. a lot of the times that is our struggle point. Like, what is happening? And we get so frustrated sometimes that we just both explode. And we're like, okay, I need a few days. Let me process, like, what happened. I'm not happy with the way I reacted about this. You know, and like, you know, drop the ego. Mm-hmm. Because... There ain't no relationship going anywhere with some ego in that bitch. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Ego's the killer, actually. Oh, ego is ego is the entire killer. Ego is the killer of life. Yeah, that's a ego fact. is not just a that's killer. That's a whole fact. Yeah, ego is not just a killer in a relationship, it's the killer of life. If you are moving anything, we're like, oh, I'm not gonna say nothing because this person should have said something. That's your ego. And you're not right, you're just wrong. Like that's, right. that's it. You think you're protecting yourself. like, And that's why ego has been a thing because we're protecting ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want to protect ourselves. I get it. But sometimes your ego is not right. Yeah. Your ego is a lens that you just want to see things in this lens. And you're like, oh, this is the case. This is always going to be X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know? I want (laughs) to talk about the business side of it all, right? In terms Mm -hmm. of like you guys have had so many brand deals, Mm -hmm. right? Um. Hulu being one of them, mm-hmm. I feel like you were excited about that one. Yeah, that was a that was a ten out of ten. Like we why? Love Hulu. What was a ten out of ten for that one? What well, was because it? one, it was the Super Bowl. Like amazing. They, yeah, they amazing. The Super Bowl. This was before COVID. It was when J Lo performed the Super Bowl. Love. So they paid us a fucking oh a whole bag a whole bag. Flew us to Miami, put us in a nice hotel, and. Took us to the Super Bowl. Well, not both of us. Only one of us had to go, got to go because of the um, the concept of the video. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it was amazing, like, working with Hulu. I was like, damn, Hulu? I can't wait till you put me in your series. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm a whole actress. That's yeah, that's see. right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was amazing. And um, one of my favorites, too, even though I don't think we got a bag, like a crazy bag, um, doing this commercial for Foot Locker, but that one's one that one that was one's one of fun. my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Because they had a whole set. Mm. They had, it was a whole production. Like, it was a whole production set to shoot their commercial. And it felt, like, really good. Like, we want to do quality work like that, you know? Right. Um, and, you know, have a whole team. You know, it feels, yeah. you know, that's what I want. Yeah. And so they <laughs> have that. that. You know what's so funny? It's like mm-hmm. of what you appear online and what you're showing me right now. You're such a girly girl. Yeah. <laughs> like you're a whole girly girl. Like you watch the romantic films. Yeah. <laughs> you want to be, you want the glitz and glams of yeah, it all. Yeah, I do, like, I do. Yeah. I, I like a part of me felt like I came into this world to prove, to, to do it. Mm. To be this person that influences so many You're thousands like of millions of people. You're like unapologetically yourself. Yeah. It's so crazy. Uh, it, it, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I'm trying to refine that for myself. But why? Because we just had a conversation offline. And I was telling you, like, for me, it's very hard for me to get on my stories and just be like, <laughs> oh, I'm up. Here I go. Like, I can't do that. I don't know. I'm- you know, but you... This is like your life, right? Uh-huh. Like this is what you do. So 
how do you like I ha- like like I'm, how I'm, I'm I like, don't want to turn the comments off like no no comments saying I don't, wanna, I, don't like, I don't even want to hear it I don't I'm not here for it keep, keep the comments coming girl you paying my bills like right, you know, right. Talking about. they see comments and they're like oh this person got engagement like yeah, you know yeah. um but my thing with like right now when I'm so, I'm finding myself second guessing. Like, mm. second guessing, like, if I want, like, like not wanting to post something. For no reason. It's right. really, and it's You posted really a minor. video. Uh-huh. Like, a while ago, kind of a while ago, kind of recent, mm-hmm. where you, I don't think you was aware, right, that you showed, like, your panties. I know there's, so there's There the, was something you deleted. There's the Kiki Challenge video. Uh-huh. But the Kiki Challenge video, I'm not wearing a dress. I'm wearing, like, um gray spandex pants. Mm-hmm. And I had gained, like, a lot of weight at this time. Like, mm-hmm. this was, like, when I had stopped dancing. Mm-hmm. Not stopped dancing. I was dancing less, eating more. And <laughs> um, so, I, like, for me, thankfully, when I gain weight, that shit go all to my ass, like, in my hips. Mm-hmm. It goes there. Mm-hmm. But it's also not really the best because my jeans don't fit. But mm-hmm. so I, we had showed my back in the video, and my mm-hmm. ass looks crazy. Like not crazy in a bad way. It just looks like it's huge. It's huge. Is what is looking like what it is, uh-huh. and all the comments is about my ass. And we did take that video down. Yeah, there was some video that you took down. Yeah, and then I told myself at that moment, I'm like, Yo, Chiclet does not play about her. Like but he does not. It was like he's. It was because like it wasn't the point of the video, and it what felt was like it for, for you, me though? the. For me, it felt really uncomfortable that people were sexualizing me like that mm. when I didn't want to be sexualized like that. You know, it's like, it. I mean, I, I didn't want to be sexualized like that. Like, for that wasn't the point of it. The point of it is the comedy of it. You know, and we have a whole bunch of fucking people over here. Oh, my God, all right, so fast, all right, so fast. There's not a third. And, like, yeah. forget, the, forget the content. Forget the Kiki challenge. Like, that's not a part of him trying to do it. You know, so... It was like really uncomfortable for me at the time. So he respected that and we took down the video. Mm-hmm. And then we made videos in joking of that. Yeah. So like, you know what? This is what y'all want. Like, all right, here you go. And then it's Chicla's face coming out of pair of shorts and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. Like it's hilarious. And then we did the Kiki challenge again, but this time I'm dressed like fully clothed. Mm. Like, so that was the situation with that. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, I had a contract with Savage X Fenty and, you know, but it's also about the context. Like, I, the way I show myself, it's, I'm showing my skin, but it's not in a way where I'm being slutty about it. Like, I don't yeah. want you to sexualize me. I'm sh- I'm showing my skin. I'm being true in my skin. And it's two, di- like, it's just two different things. I don't know if I can explain the way it is, but. Um, no, I know what you mean by you know, that. Yeah. What, what's a brand that, uh you haven't worked with but you want to work with because i feel like the riri brand is like a big brand but yeah right now i'm not in contract with them I... hopefully they bring it back though you know can we talk about that or do you... um I, I think i can but it's not really much to talk about it was just a, it wasn't no specific reason that mm-hmm. they that i don't have a contract it was just about the timing i guess mm-hmm. well for this is what they said because you never know because right. actually well, I'm not going to speak about it. I'll tell okay. you that off camera. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you're comfortable with, girl. But um, mm-hmm. it was like I was the I had a one off for like one month at first. Mm-hmm. And then they re-upped and did six months. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the six months, it ended in like September. So they had a look at their budget. They mm-hmm. were like, we're, we're not going to sign up right now. We need to reevaluate our budget. Like, we'll... We'll talk back at the top of the year. Mm-hmm. And I swear that. So my manager, probably after Mercury gets out of retrograde, I'll have Ooh. him reach out because, you know, we don't want Because shit changes yeah. <laughs> after retrograde. Yeah. No way but what's a brand you think you want to work with? A brand I would like to work with. I mean, I'll tell you my favorite. I love House of CB. Ooh, I love their love. stuff. Their dresses are so expensive too. Yeah. But I have a few collection already. Um, it just snatched your whole body. Yeah. I love how C B. I love that. Those are the kind of styles that I really like. Like yeah. I like um I I, I, I guess you want to I want to explain it as like a work of art. Mm. Like, you know, very contemporary. 
That's my style. I love that. Like you see my shirt, like you oh, come said. Come on now. Look. Come you on. Know, show you know. the fashion. Yeah, the fashion. Show I think I need to get a new pair of jeans of these. I've washed these out a little too much. <laughs> They're supposed to be plain black. <laughs> um, but yeah, House of CB is one. I'm trying to think. That I, I don't know. I, I should reevaluate why I don't be like I want this brand, like. Because I feel like you could get any brand at this moment, right? Well, sometimes they don't, like, you know what it is? It's, some companies have budgets. Right. Some companies well, yeah. don't. So, yeah. some companies don't want to reach out to the fa to the person with the two million followers because they know it's going to cost money for her. So, for, for them, for that content. Right. So, instead, they'll reach out to the smaller company, so small, the micro influencers. Right. Because they can send them bags of clothes for free. And, and they're gonna post and it, they're gonna they post it and... in exchange for for content. Right. So, um, I've reached out to like pretty little things. I've wanted to work with pretty little things a few times, but none's ever um, happened with them. Um, who else? I don't know. I definitely want to elevate my brand, though. Yeah. Like, What's I like do want to be phase? an actress. I want to be an actress. Do you? Yeah, I do. Um, like what, like comedy films? Like what, what, like what type of actress? What are we looking like? I would love to do the comedy thing. Are we looking like, like a Netflix series? I mean, I don't know. Whoever's who, we see who, you who on are knocking on the thing? door? Like, what are you, who's knocking on the door, bitch? Like, where? If Hulu's at the door, bitch, I'll open the door. Netflix, you opening the door. Right. Warner Brothers, like what? Like, what we doing? I love Oh, this. yeah. I don't know. I'm very like, I need to be more direct what I want. Yeah. So I don't have a specific like what where I see myself. I definitely could see myself in like serious roles. Um, Do you think you could down. play a serious role? Yeah, I could. You could you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could. And I, I think uh, the comedy is like very easy because you got to be you, right. and you know, comedy's comedy is funny. Yeah. Um, but I could definitely do a serious role. And um, I've been taking my acting classes. Ooh. And so, you know, oh, the girl's actually, popping. actually start I'll that back up year. soon. Um, Love it. But yeah, so I'm so excited. I've always been a character. You know, I, I've had many faceted. I hope that's the right word. Multifaceted. Multifaceted. <laughs> Multifaceted. They're like, yo, Melanie, um, <laughs> acting is all cool and all, but you need to learn how to speak. No, so. no, 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 no. <laughs> You know, one of the reasons why I really did want to have this conversation with you is because I want people to see this side of you because I don't feel like you show that. Mm -hmm. I feel like you show the comedic side, which is cool, right? Uh -huh. You know, and plus you make a bag off of it. Um, so that's also good, too. You get the bag and fumble right. it. I get the bag and flip it and tumble it. <laughs> but I also feel like people need to see this. People need to hear your story. People need to really know the person behind like what this is all about you know and and honestly this is a business let's keep it real right like being an influencer that's a whole business that's a whole job and we spoke about that right yeah. like i couldn't do that i couldn't mm -hmm. be the one to like get up on camera at all times and maybe if there was a bag involved maybe yeah. i may feel a little like, different you know what? let yeah. me Actually, let me get the, let, me... let me get the editing yeah. real quick <laughs> but i think because oftentimes people say well it's being a, an influencer a real job mm -hmm. but it, it, is. it but it, it is. So is like but it is a real job it'd be, it be the same people i was literally thinking this the other day i was like i've never done a video of me talking about like that backlash that influencers get they right. like oh it's not a real job i'm like yo bitch you can't even do this with your eyes closed like those are the same people that be like oh it's not a real job what's a real job you're nine to five. You know what I'm coordinating, right, right. Um, scheduling, managing, negotiating, uh, being creative. That's a whole nother. That's if I told someone I was a marketing director, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, she has a job, bitch." That's what I do. Like, what right. are you talking about? Like, what do you think I do in my videos? Yeah, like, that's what uh, any influencer that one shows up online. That's that's the job itself. Is showing up. Forget everything else. Forget and the, the consistency, right? That's You've been it. doing it for years. That's it. That's it. Being authentic. That's another thing. I didn't. We didn't get to touch on it, but I'm like, you know, it kind of, not that it hurts, but like when my career is based on who I am, like if you don't like me, what the hell happens to my money? What the hell happens to my likelihood? Like now I have to separate my career 
and who I am. Mm. I have to, I have, I can't be like, you need to like me. Mm. Like I need to get people to like me. I can't do that. I can't, you can't do that. You can't do that because that's not how that works. You do need to keep those things separate. Mm -hmm. I am who I am and this is my career mm -hmm. and this is who I am and this is who I show you. Mm -hmm. And those are two separate things, you know? That I was literally thinking that I was oh my god that's so I'm so glad we brought that up. <laughs> no, is it true? I remember um, was it I don't know if it was Kim Kardashian, but she brought it up uh -huh. at one point where she was like, you know, likability is uh -huh. a real thing. Yeah, it's a whole real thing because in this industry, if people don't like you, mm -hmm. you're not gonna get anything. Yeah, you're not so showing up as your authentic self. Mm -hmm. which is what I feel. That's why I asked you and I went kind of deep into it. Like, but is this who you really are? And you're like, no, this is who I am. <laughs> like, yeah. who, I've been like this. Is, I've learned this. Yeah. Like my mom's like this. And that's why I went that far back because I'm thinking like, well, where, where did she learn this from? Mm -hmm. Right. Because we are often like our parents, you know, I know I'm definitely like, I remember Growing up, I'm like, I don't want to be anything like my mother. Yeah. I never want to. And I always said that. And then God forgive me. I'm like, I'm like my mom. You end up being like and your I'm mom. Like, Shit, I'm like my mom in yeah. so many ways. And not that it's a bad thing because mm -hmm. my mom is an incredible woman. But it's just like, the you don't realize. You, yeah. The thing you don't want to be, you end up becoming. Like, right. You, you could judge. You judge 10 million people. You're going to walk them footsteps of those 10 million people. That's right. Hands down. That's like, right. Let's do a couple of rapid fires before you get out of here. Okay. Okay, ready? All right. Ready. Tell me you're Latina without telling me you're Latina. Oh, that's my that's my voice. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's my that's my spice. <laughs> okay. What does it mean to you to be Latina? Um, dancing typico. Mm. Um, finish this sentence. Growing up Latina is beautiful. Any <laughs> last like you know, just comments or anything that you want to say to, because you do have that following that <laughs> they really love you. So yeah, anything I that do. you want to send to the I, to the fans? I was definitely, I wanted, I do want to say thank you to everyone that like supports us and really genuinely been riding with us for almost five years or so. Um, but, you know, aside from that, I love you. I appreciate y'all. You know, showing up and definitely T Millennial always be rotting. They do. Um, and I shout out to all the people that you know how many people name their kids after me? Really? I swear to God. I swear to God. I get messages like almost every day. Like, oh, I named my daughter after you. It's so beautiful. So, you know, the love and appreciation never goes unnoticed. Um, we appreciate it truly. Um, I'm so excited for this new chapter in my life. Make sure you check out our, we also have our own podcast. That's, That's right, your reality. Uh, check out my collaboration with Wet Blue. And I love y'all guys. Like, follow, subscribe to, grow, to Growing Up Latina. I had to look at the thing before I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. And thank you so much. Thank you. Melanie Cruz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.